Hi, and welcome to your training video on managing your email in Google Apps. The first thing we need to do is to log into the Google Apps email system. As per every other video, please note that the username does not have the at jdcc.edu. The first item we want to cover is using the star function that is in Google email. It's quite a wonderful function and can help you keep lists of to-do items or uh, emails that might need a follow-up. You can see between the checkbox and the username there is a little star outline and you can simply check that and then those items appear over here on the left hand in your starred category. To make a star go away, click it and it goes away. If you click once, you must wait about a second or two before you can click again and the star goes away. Now that seems, seems rather good, but Google has gone one step further and if you have not watched the settings video you may want to watch that, but we'll try it here. We'll go into our mail settings and you can see in the stars section here that you can drag and drop stars up and down and have multiple stars to choose from. We'll save those changes. Now how do you choose a different star? While you are selecting the, the star the first time when you star an item, continue to click and it will cycle through the different options for stars. Click an existing star, it goes away. So you have to remember it's you have the choice during your initial set of a star. Or you can remove and add it back to choose a different star. And when you look in your starred folder, you have multiple different stars. So that's the starred feature and that's very, very handy. People in other email systems have often remarked to me that they used the Mark Unread feature, which Google does have. You can select a specific message and say, Mark is read. Of course, that one is, is already read. You can say, Mark as unread, and it will change the message to unread, and that's how they kept up with what items they need to return to or they needed to look at. Uh, unfortunately, that is really not the best way to do it because you never really know how many unread messages you have. The starred function really adds uh, an easy way for you to be able to track those type of messages and even categorize them by using the different colors or styles of stars. Next, let's talk about searching. You can search on a name. We can see Hardy, Anthony is how many of these emails that we have come in. So we'll search just on a name, and now you can see any email that has that name in it, to or from. Very, very easy to search. You can also search based on an email address. So we put in support at jdcc.edu, and we can see anything to or from the support system now shows up. Something I'd like to point out, Google expects you to use the search heavily. And I must encourage you to do that. Please remember that the Google search is really a very powerful feature within your email. After all, they are a search company. That's their primary bread and butter. You will note that you cannot sort by the sender and you cannot sort by the date. It's always sorted by the date with the newest at the top. And that is because the search feature, the search feature is so powerful and searches so quickly. Keep that in mind that you don't need to, sort, to sort. The whole purpose of sorting is to find a specific email when you're sorting your inbox. You don't need to do that ever again. You can always search. Now if you're looking to search by date or other functions, here is a uh, more, slightly more advanced search options screen, which I clicked by showing the, clicking the show search options link up top. And you can fill these items in. You can even say search within one day of, and you'll see they have different formats for you to use down there. Search within one day of 6-30-2010. We hit enter to search. And now we see only items that are within one day of 6-30, uh, one day before, one day after. So that's a very, very handy thing. You can also search on attachments. Has words, does not have words. So if one day, well, we didn't want to have anything that had the word Mooney in it. Uh, that one email that had Mooney there is now gone. So we'll go back to our inbox and the next thing I would like for us to discuss with you is labels. When you think about labels I want you to remember that they can be used exactly as folders in most email systems that you might be used to as they can there. 
The difference between a folder in a standard email system versus a label is very, very simple. Think about the actual items. Think about a manila folder. Nothing computer related, but a manila folder you may have in your office. If you take a piece of paper and put it in that folder, it can only go in that one folder. That piece of paper cannot magically appear in another folder. Uh, definitely not one more, not two, three, four more. If you put a label on that piece of paper, you might be able to put four, five, six labels on that paper or more. However many would actually fit depending on the size of your label. That is why Google uses labels. You can think of them as folders, but really and truly they have much more functionality. So, without going any further than that, if you want to simply use your labels as folders, we're going to keep this simple. We'll do the advanced stuff in an advanced class. Let's look at it like this. Here's your Labels button. You have some existing labels. If you want to type in a new label, let's go to Manage Labels. It's going to take us to a screen where we can create a new label. These are the existing system labels. We cannot get rid of these, so we can create a new label. And we're going to create one called Test. Click Create. You'll see the test now shows up here. If we want to rename, we can simply click in there. We can rename that. Please note down here, in previous email systems you might have used, if you removed a folder, it deleted everything in that folder. The difference with this system also as well is a very, very good thing. If you remove the label, it does not remove the message with the label. So you can still find it with search, or if there are other labels attached to the message, you can still find it that way. It's a very, very nice feature to have. So, let us take a look at another way for you to be able to add labels. If I want to add a label over here, perhaps I want it to come underneath another area, or I want to simply create a new label. Instead of going into my Manage Labels like I did here and visiting an entirely new screen, since I know most of my labels are here and there are a few more, I can click Four More and I can see Chats, All Mail, Spam, Trash, and Manage Labels. There is a Create New Label link here. I can simply click Create, Test 2, and click the Create button. And now Test and Test 2 both show. If I click those labels, you'll see there's nothing that has been labeled with that. Or if you think of it as a folder, there's nothing in the folder. To put something inside this folder or to add the label to the message, if I click on these little dotted dots to the left of the check mark, you can see how my cursor turns into a hand. I'm going to pull this Gmail team and you can see I can drag it over. It says move one conversation and when I drop, it tells me up top the conversation has been moved to test. I can say undo and it will literally put it back. That treats the message just as if it were going into a folder. So you can use these exactly like they were folders. If I click on the folder test, I can now see that the message is there. If I want to move multiple messages, I can simply select multiple messages and I can say move to test and it literally takes them out of the inbox and puts them over here. Now one of the advantages of labels is that I can have more than one on it more than one label on a message. So I can say these three messages are going to have the label Anthony Hardy. Notice they did not leave my inbox but now they have the label Anthony Hardy. So they're in my inbox and if I click over here on the what you normally would think of as a folder those messages show up as well. You can see that they have they're going to be labeled with Anthony Hardy and they're going to be in your inbox. Now let's say that one of those maybe this one because it looks slightly different needs to go into follow-up or priority. Now it also is in there. So it's in my inbox, it's in the anthony.hardy at jdcc.edu, and it's in priority. So if I click on priority, I see that one message, anthony.hardy at jdcc.edu, and I see all three, and then I've left all of them in my inbox. But very easily, you can simply click on a message, and if you want to remove the inbox, you don't want this to be in your inbox anymore, you can click the X. Uh, if you want to take it out of a specific label, you can do it from here. Very, very simple. Oh, one other thing. Please note, you do also have the capacity to star messages from within the message itself. So that's not only from this primary screen. So that's the basics of using and, and 
building labels. There is one more thing I want to show you concerning labels, and that is how to build what are called nested labels, or maybe I think of it a folder inside of a folder. If I click the little drop down arrow, I can do all kinds of things. I can change colors, etc., etc., but I can add a sub label. We'll call this test sub. You can see that I've got nest under test, so that now I get a plus sign next to test. If I click that plus, I can see that there is a label underneath there as well. So you can still create basically what are folders inside folders or labels inside labels, just like you might have done uh, in other email systems. One final thing that I would really like to show you that I think is extremely important to using Google is the fact that you cannot shift select. Many people are used to clicking shift and selecting multiple messages. My recommendation is to read all messages that you would like to you to read. So if I click on this message and I need to follow up on this message, I'm going to do a star or I'm going to add a label to it or whatever the case may be. I'm going to go back to my inbox. I'm going to read this message and I'm going to do a star or a label or I'm going to delete it if I don't need anything else. And now that I've looked through all those messages that I know that I need to read, this is a test account so it doesn't matter that I'm doing this, I can use this drop down and I can select all unread messages. You're going to note it's going to select every message that is unread. These are all unread because they're just in here as a test. I can then click delete and it will delete all of my messages that I do not want and do not want to read at once. Please keep in mind that's a very handy feature to have and is what I highly recommend you use as your default way of going through your email. Read all of the messages, mark every message that you would like to mark, go ahead and read them that you want to keep and every message that you do not want to keep then will be unread. You can select unread and hit delete. We will explain some of these other buttons in upcoming Google videos or you can read about them through the Google Help system which you can of course access underneath the settings area and mail help. If you have any questions about this or any of our other videos please be sure to send them to support at jdcc.edu. Thank you very much.